They welcomed polygamy and multiple marriages, and marriages dissolved without problems. Cheyenne Tribes, greetings. Today we're going to talk about the Cheyenne Indian Tribe, which originated several centuries ago on the Great Plains. And at the same time, we will analyze the amazing customs of this people, including family customs. It is true that Indians still live in North America and where they can be found. Who the men of this tribe hunted most often. What is sister polygamy that Indians practiced in the past? Is it true that the divorce processes of the natives were effortless? Be sure to watch the video to the very end so you don't miss all the important details on this topic. Native American Origins this is most likely the first time you're hearing about the Cheyenne tribes that originated in what is now the United States. There is nothing wrong with this, since rare peoples really lived in this region. More specifically, Indian tribes that actively resisted European colonizers and conquerors. The Cheyenne were no exception in this regard. The origin of the descendants of the Indian tribe is usually attributed to the 16th century. It was during this period that the movement of the indigenous inhabitants of the United States to the West took place. After that, the Indians settled in the territories of the Missouri River, as well as North Dakota. And only in the 17th century, there was a merger of two tribes, Sististas and Sutai. The Cheyenne tribe was formed, and already in the next two centuries, the struggle of indigenous people with hostile settlers began to take place. Conflicts with the U.S. government in particular escalated because the government often failed to honor treaties of friendship and trade. Such treaties also involved the delineation of territories. In the 13th century, the Cheyenne tribes were forced to go on the war path to once again confront the white population. That's when the Indians united with other peoples, such as the Arapaho. The valiant warriors demonstrated courage and bravery in their fight for freedom and independence, despite the fact that some of them surrendered. Nevertheless, in the process of numerous skirmishes and battles, the Cheyenne still managed to leave the conquered lands. This time, some of the Indians migrated north and the rest migrated south. This is why the Cheyenne tribes are now divided into two main groups, the northern and southern. As you have probably guessed by now, the Cheyenne still live in the territory of the United States. This is really so, considering that the authorities of America provided the people with reservations for comfortable living. To date, the population of Indians is about 13.5 thousand people. Interesting fact, several geographical objects are named in honor of Cheyenne tribes. This is the city of the same name in the northwest of America, the capital of the state of Wyoming, and of course the mountain located in Colorado. The main occupations of the Cheyenne in the past. Many of you may think that Cheyenne for a long period of time was engaged in military affairs. This is only partially true. We should not forget the peaceful times when the Indians finally settled on the Great Plains. Well, let's expand on that point. In the second half of the 18th century, the Cheyenne were able to acquire horses. This allowed them not only to get from point A to point B quickly. Horse hunting for bison in the century before last became one of the key occupations of the Indian tribe. It was these animals that Cheyenne men began to hunt frequently. In addition to hunting, the Aborigines were engaged in other customary activities. For example, the basis of economic activity was gathering, fishing, and of course trade. Plus, the Cheyenne mastered the skill of gathering wild rice, which, along with buffalo meat, formed the basis of people's daily diet. Over time, the Indians began to lead a nomadic lifestyle. Tribes moved in groups in search of favorable living conditions. So-called tipis, something resembling cone-shaped tents, were used as portable dwellings, and they were set up in such a way that the wind did not get inside. In fact, the technique was very simple. Tipis were set up with the entrance on the eastern side, while in these places the wind blew mainly from the west. As for the camps, they were not so large. Each Cheyenne camp consisted of an average of 13 tipis. However, for discussing important topics, organizing meetings and rituals, Cheyenne camps were significantly expanded. The entire tribe of Indians could gather here. Family values and marriage in Cheyenne understanding. After all of the above, it is worth mentioning the theme of family and marriage unions. In the Cheyenne tribes, there were not only traditional forms of relationships between a man and a woman. Due to the fact that the situation at that time was unstable, the Indians tried to unite even more. Such a process is exactly what influenced the formation of new forms of marriage. The first thing to look at is polygamy. Each man from the Indian tribe could really get several female companions. And in this regard, sister polygamy was most valued. As you understand, it is formed from several relatives, in this case, siblings. In fact, this kind of polygamy had a major advantage. Sisters got along with each other, 
and thus the probability of conflicts and unfavorable situations in the family tended to zero. Along with polygamy, Cheyenne tribes also practiced polyandry when one woman married several men. As in the previous case, there was a rapprochement with relatives, siblings. During wars and numerous battles, such a marriage ensured that the spouse would not be left alone. For example, if one of the brothers did not return from a military campaign, the widow began to live with his brother. Although this form of relationship is a thing of the past for Native Americans, there are still peoples on earth who adhere to polyandry. For example, the South Asian nation of Nepal. Of course, the Cheyenne tribes had family breakdowns, after which the marriage was dissolved. And the marriage unions were dissolved rather quickly and without unnecessary fuss. This is explained by the fact that the concept of jointly acquired property was not introduced in relation to the spouses. Each had with him personal items, jewelry, and other property. So throughout the divorce process, each spouse took what belonged to him or her and then left. You will be surprised, but in the Cheyenne Indian tribes, there was freedom of relationships. For example, the female representatives of the female sex could easily choose a suitable partner and be alone with him. The first wedding nights between a man and a woman did not call the latter to anything. Also among the Indians, the custom of exchanging wives, as it happens among the Chukchi, was rare but still occurred. Other aspects of the Indian tribe's livelihood. Finally, we will explain what else you need to know about the Cheyenne. Now you will definitely know a lot more about the Indians. First, there is a different name of the tribe, consonant with the generally accepted Cheyenne. And the name Cheyenne itself translates as people who speak a foreign language. Secondly, the tribe speaks not only Cheyenne language but also English, and the latter is spoken by the majority of the Indian population. Thirdly, the natives profess Christianity, and also Cheyenne adhere to the belief in the existence of the afterlife and animality of all nature. This religion is called animism. Conclusion. Thus, Cheyenne tribes over several centuries have formed their own culture, traditions, and even language. In past times, in order to survive and cohesion, Indians entered into polygamous marriages. Today, this people numbering almost 14,000 live on American reservations.